I said salute to the untouchable True School Sports Empire. <laughs> That's over right, the untouchable. Not only the South Florida boxing scene, but the worldwide boxing scene. It's personal between me and you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, this is a classic fight review. Um, my last one that I'm going to do in this sitting because uh, these are all the fights that I've watched recently. Um, I had a chance to watch Ricky, uh, the, the, the defining night in Ricky Hatton's career when Ricky Hatton fought Costa Zoo as a massive underdog in Manchester at the MEN Arena and against all odds, he went in there and he beat Costa Zoo. Um, stopped Costa Zoo in the 11th round actually. So I kind of wanted to get my take on this fight and really just uh, kind of paint a picture of, of the man that Ricky Hatton was. Uh, Cause you know, I think a lot of people, they only talk about Ricky Hatton when he fought Floyd. They only talk about Ricky Hatton when he fought Pacquiao cause those are like the biggest names on his resume, but man, those were not at his best weight. His best weight was 140 or no, Floyd was at 147. Pacquiao knocked him out at 40, which makes Pac which shows you how great Pacquiao is. But um Floyd um uh, didn't fight him at 140, he fought him at 47. And everybody knows his best best player is uh, at 140. But I want so this was, I would say, the best one in his resume. He fought Costa Zoo. Costa Zoo, I mean, this is a guy for Costa at, at this at this juncture in time, Costa Zoo hadn't lost for years. I mean, we're talking about Costa Zoo had not lost. This fight this so this fight was in June. Of 2005, Costa Zoo had not lost since May of '97. So we're talking about eight, eight year unbeaten run. We're talking about a great run. I mean, the the the, the bulk of his career, the the, guy, the guys that he beat that made his name, the household name, were in that period uh, from you know knocking out undefeated Zab Judah, who had a lot of hype, to you know Ben Tacky, to Sean Ben Mitchell, to uh, you know older. Julio Cesar Chavez to the Miguel Angel Gonzalez to Rafael Ruelas. I mean, Ricky had, um, Costa Zoo had cemented himself as Hall of Famer before the Ricky Hatton fight, in my opinion. He was a Hall of Fame fighter before he fought Ricky Hatton. He fights Hatton, you know, albeit on a on a layoff. You know, he had you know he hadn't fought at that point since November of uh, 04. So this is we're talking about a what uh, eight month layoff before that. He hadn't fought since January of 03. So we're talking about what? That's what, a 12? We're talking about, man, a 22-month layoff before. So he hadn't really had, had been very active over that, over that two-year period between 03 and 05. Um, he was older. He was inactive. But he was still a heavy favorite because he was Costa Zoo. And he hadn't lost for like eight years. And he is the same guy that knocked out Zab Judah in two rounds. And he was the real deal. No doubt about it. So... Hatton had the whole field advantage. We saw a fight where, you know, um, Costa Zoo, who was a dominant and just feared champion, um, you know, Ricky Hatton fought that fight. That he's the same, the same kind of way he fought against Floyd. He fought against Costa Zoo, but that style, obviously, at 140 is more effective because it's more of his natural weight. Uh, he would get in your chest. He would push you back. He would grind you down. He would throw combinations when he had space to throw combinations, and. Um, you know, this is a lot different than what Costa Zoo wanted to do because Costa Zoo comes from that, you know, Soviet Union school of, of, of the amateur system to where, you know, it's very fundamentally sound, it's very textbook, it's, it's very distance orientated, you know, it's very jab dominant to set up the right hand. And um, that was kind of the count and mouse game um, going into the fight. Now, um, early on, I, I really think uh, the way Hatton style favored him. But then kind of in the middle rounds, you know, Casa Zoo began to find the range and, 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 and pick Hatton off at times. But then Hatton was able to show his mental fortitude and resolve as a champion and, and continue to push push Casa Zoo back and, and and really, really make him feel every last bit of his uh of his of his inactivity over the last two years, you know, and, and, and he took advantage of that. And he grinded him down and took him to some deep, dark, uncomfortable places. So much so to the point that in the 11th round, Costa Zoo didn't even come out. You know, his, his trainer, Giant Lewis, threw him the towel. And that's what it was. Uh, it was an emotional scene at the MEN Arena. 
the, the crowd went crazy and, and Ricky Hatton had, 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 had uh, broken out into tears and, and a star, an absolute star had been born as the hitman. Ricky Hatton had captured the Ring Magazine uh, you know, lightweight title in conjunction with the IBF lightweight title and a star was absolutely born that night. Make no mistakes about it. Let there be no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This was the defining night of Ricky Hatton's career. This was his moment in the sun. Every, every fighter, from the moment a fighter picks up a boxing gloves and has that dream of becoming champion, every fighter fights. They go to the gym it, when they don't want to go to the gym. They 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 walk in the rain. They want they run in the rain to the gym. They they deal with all of life circumstances. Uh, not having money for amateur tournaments, uh, not having money to get around, not having money for expenses. They deal with these things so they could have a moment like this, like Ricky Hatton had, their moment in the sun where against all the odds, when, when people don't really give them much of a chance, when they when they say your abilities are not quite up to par to beat a guy like Casa Zou, you, you train, you grind, you sacrifice for a moment like that. And, and, and it really was uh, the beginning of what I think for Ricky Hatton was a, was a really fun four to five fight run. I mean, he he beat Kaz, he stopped Kazazu in the eleventh round, made him quit on the storm, retired him, um, beats Juan Urango, undefeated Juan Urango at that to uh, you know you know to continue to defend the belt. He then goes you know and and, and fights uh, Jose Luis Castillo, you know UK versus Mexico. They always say UK gets this, the short end of the stick. Well, that wasn't the case for Ricky Hatton. He rose to the occasion and did what, did what Mayweather never did in two fights. He stopped Jose Luis Castillo. Um, and then two fights before Jose Luis Castillo, he even went up to, to welterweight and fought the very tough, very game uh, Luis Colazo, who at that time was 26-1, and one, and picked, picked up the WBA title to become a two-weight world champion. Um, so Ricky Hatton was the real deal. Ricky Hatton was big time. Ricky Hatton was everything and then some um, and i really feel like people use the floyd fights and they use the pacquiao fights and they had those images of him running into the turnbuckle against floyd they had the images of pacquiao landing the big left hand that damn they look like it killed him and that's like the defining image they have in their mind but they, what people don't consider is how did how did ricky had even get those fights if he wasn't that good like you say he is how did ricky had even get those fights he got those fights because this guy was the truth at 140 i mean he beat he stopped and made a Hall of Famer quit in Costa Zoo. A guy that I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if he's in the Hall of Fame, but he should be in the Hall of Fame in Costa Zoo. You know, and then people always said Ricky Hatton was too slow. His arm, you know, he had, he had, he had, like, he's a great example for, for fighters. He wasn't the quickest fighter in the world. I mean, he was, he, he had some decent speed, but he wasn't like, you know, he wasn't um, Manny Pacquiao. He wasn't Floyd, but he had some decent speed. But like, they always said his arms were too short. They always said he wasn't the hardest hitter. They, they said a lot of things about Ricky Hatton, but, but he found a way time and time again at 140 um, to show the world that not only was he a good fighter at 140, he was a great fighter at 140. And I don't, I don't throw that term around loosely. Ricky Hatton in his prime at 140, I think is, is, is giving pretty much the majority of fighters hell. You know, you got to be a really special fighter at 140 to beat Ricky Hatton. And that's why I regard Manny Pacquiao so highly. Manny Pacquiao fought Ricky Hatton at 140 and knocked him the fuck out in two rounds. So that 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 gives credence to Pacquiao. But I say all these things to say that, you know, he beat a really good fighter. He beat a, a fantastic fighter in Costa Zoo. Um, you know, Costa Zoo retired after that fight. And he was so, if you go and you watch the fight and you watch the interview, he was so gracious in defeat. It's really a far cry from what we have now in boxing. And sometimes this is why I can't watch classic boxing too much because I just feel like fighters and the men in the sport were just, there were more men, manly than they are now. Uh, Casa Zou did not make one excuse. Casa Zou uh, didn't try to say anything to demean or discredit the win of Ricky Hatton. He was so gracious in defeat. And it made me respect Casa Zou that much more. And it's it's not hard to see why Tim Zhu so like I met Tim Zhu. I was at, I was at his media workout for his American debut against Terrell Gouche in Vegas. And it's not hard to see why Tim Zhu is how he is when you see how his dad act like the proud, dignified champion that he was. I mean, this is a guy in Casa Zhu that had not lost for eight years. He had knocked out. I mean, he had been big names like top quality names in the sport. I mean, we're talking about when Zab Judah was was like hyped up. Beat the living shit out of him. Made him do the made, made him do the chicken dance. Got him out of there in two rounds. 
you know, we talk about, I mean, albeit it was a very, very old Julio Cesar Chavez with, with 103 fights, he still fought Julio Cesar Chavez in, in Phoenix. He fought Julio Cesar Chavez on the West Coast in an area where, you know, anybody who knows anything about boxing knows when you fight a, when you fight a big name, money-making Mexican fighter like Canelo, Julio Cesar Chavez in Texas, Arizona, or California, one of those highly populated Mexican states, it's very likely you're not gonna get the luck of the draw so far as judging is concerned. But Casa Zou made sure he didn't allow the judges to, to, to ruin his night against Chavez, and he made sure he stopped him in six rounds. And he showed his quality time and time again. And I was like, I have so much respect for Casa Zou. Um, I love to meet him one day. I met his son, but I love to meet him because he's um, just a really good fighter. And yeah, Ricky Hatton was the, like, I, if, you, if you don't take nothing from this video, please take away that Ricky Hatton was nothing but the truth at 140. And he was a big time fighter. He was pay-per-view. He was worth your dollar. He was worth your time. He was worth your energy. And um, I just don't think he gets the credit he deserves. So yeah, I'm leave it at that. That's my thoughts on Ricky Hatton and that magical night at the MEN Arena when he stopped Costa Zul and retired him. So uh, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniels. So until next time, take care, guys. And I think uh, True School of Sports, he's the truth. One of the best YouTube, the best. Ooh, the, the number one. Number one. Brandon, you've been there, man, and you're building up a good following Thank with you. us. Thank you. And I'm proud to be a part of what you're doing, too. Mm -hmm. You are spectacular and... Uh, Thank you, man. All the best to through school boxing and keep up the good work.